Hi, I'm Keith, and I'm going to show you how to take a steel track off of a John Deere 135 and install a steel track with rubber pads back onto it. I don't have one of those. I've never needed one of those. So what I do is I use some grease. This track is adjusted and installed correctly. Before splitting and installing a track on any excavator, in this case it's a John Deere 135G, these are basically all the tools that I use. You know, depending on who it is, you might use different tools, you might use a variation of these tools and other tools. A lot of guys, uh, big mining outfits, uh, bigger companies, dealerships, they have a hydraulic pin press that they'll use to press the, uh, the master pin in and out. I don't have one of those, I've never needed one of those. Um, I use a track pin driver like so. Um, I have a rubber piece of hose in between to take up the vibration. Uh, this end here, it's for smaller machines. Uh, I've done 120s, I can do 60s with it. I have it tapered on the end. This one here I use for 200 sizes of machines, a little bit bigger. And then I have a bigger one that I use for uh, 300s and up. Um, in this case, the reason I have this one out is because I put it in the track. After I pull the grease valve out, I put it between the track and sprocket to rotate it to make sure the idler's all the way in because there's a blade, we couldn't push the bucket against the front of the track to push it in. Uh, you'll need a sledgehammer. One person holds the pin driver, one person swings a sledgehammer. Hopefully you have good aim, I have pretty good aim. Um, in this case, I use a nice heavy one. This is a 20 pound sledgehammer. It's quite heavier than most people's sledgehammers on their trucks. I use a small chain to grab onto the end of the uh, track itself. Um, and then a larger chain to, you know, hook up the small chain to the bucket. Uh, it's a lot beefier, it's bigger, it doesn't break as quick, and if a chain's going to break, I'd rather it be the small one anyways. I usually keep a couple of them on the truck. Multiple uh, pry bars, whichever one you're comfortable with, it, with whichever one that you're using. Um, I like these two myself. This is a 48-inch snap-on pry bar. This one's just your regular chisel bar. I also have a punch here. Um, you can use a piece of steel rod, whichever. I used it to put through the track link to hook my chain to to be able to pull the track on the machine. And as well, you can also use it to start to drive the master pin back in when it's still loose. Snap ring pliers to pull the snap ring out of the master link. We have a half inch drive ratchet with a deep 24 millimeter socket. Uh, that's to pull out and install the grease valve. A grease gun, I use a cordless one. You can use air, cordless, manual, doesn't really matter. However you grease your machine you can, and adjust your track, you can use that grease gun. A block of wood, you may or may not use it. I used it on the first track. I didn't need to use it on the second one. This one is a little bit big for this size of machine. I should have had half of a thickness one. And then a little bit of grease to put the uh, washers back in on the master link. So the first thing that you're gonna need to do is we're gonna bring the machine up in the air. We're gonna find the master pin. Once we find the master pin, we can remove the snap ring and then we can set it up. We have to slack the track off and then we can drive the master pin out. So the first thing you need to do is you need to locate the master pin. There's only one pin in the entire track that if you pull it out, the track will actually split open. On this side of the track, it's just a dot. And on this side of the track, there's actually a snap ring that holds it in. Simple snap ring, we remove it. Now this pin is a tapered pin. It can only go in and out from this side. It has to come out this side, also has to go back in this side. The snap ring holds it in. Sometimes the pin is tight up against the snap ring. You might have to use a driver, which I'll show you in a minute what driver we use to push it in just a little bit further to get, take the tension off the snap ring so you can remove it. Now that the snap ring is removed, now we're gonna take the slack off the track, which we have to remove the track adjuster grease valve to do so. So we put it up in the air. You can leave it on the ground to remove it. So in this case, we will put it back on the ground to remove it. Now that it's on the ground, there will be less pressure on the grease valve. I use a 24 millimeter deep socket to remove it. You don't have to remove the grease valve all the way. I prefer to because it leaves a nice big opening for the grease to come out of. Put the grease valve somewhere where you'll know where it is when you put it back together. And now we will pick the track back up. In this case, 
This machine is fairly new, it's not dirty, so the track will slacken off by itself. But in cases where the tracks are a little bit older, you might be replacing them, or you might be doing some repair work to them and the, the, the front idler does not want to move in on its own, we use a bar or a pipe, or you can use more than one, and we run it through the sprocket to help pull that idler back in. So right now we'll lift it up. We will run the pipe through it just to show you how it's done. We suggest using a solid pin, pin stock, any kind of solid steel. You put it between the sprocket and the track itself. So as the sprocket rolls around, it takes up all the slack and it pulls that chain tighter. So you put the pin in, hold it in such a way so that if it wants to move a little bit, it's not going to hurt your hand or anything like that. You can wear a pair of gloves and get your operator to just travel this track slowly in reverse. As you can see, it's starting to take the slack out of the track. If this track was really tight and that idler wasn't moving, it would suck that idler in. You can use more than one pin if you like. And that's how you would get a track adjuster to go in to remove the tracks if it doesn't want to move in or if it's seized or full of dirt. So the next step we're going to do is we have to punch the master pin out. So we have to line the master pin up in such a way where it's comfortable to swing a hammer. My master pin is right here, so we'll get our operator to bring it up in this area for us. That's where I like it. And now we're going to put it back on the ground to make sure the track stays tight and it doesn't swing around while we're driving it with a hammer. So what I've got to do this job is we use a drift. So I have different size of drifts for different machines. This one that I used as a pin in the sprocket, it's for bigger machines, 300 size machines, bigger. This one's for our smaller machines. So you want to make sure there's a handle attached to it because you need somebody to hang on to this and then you need to drive this with a sledgehammer and you don't want anybody's hands anywhere near it. Anytime that you're driving sledgehammers and pins, you want to make sure you have safety glasses because if you miss a little bit, a piece of metal can come flying off. As you can see, when the pin decides to come out, it sometimes can fly quite a ways. This pin is a tapered pin. You can see and feel this side is smaller than this side. We have a nipple on this one side. That's the side the snap ring always goes on. It's a bigger end. You cannot put this pin in backwards. Now that we have the track split, inside your track, you have two rings. You wanna make sure you don't lose these rings. They have to go back in when you put the track back on. We're putting the steel tracks with rubber pads on this machine. So I've already lined them up. This is one way to do it. So in this case, we're gonna walk the machine forwards. So the track is laying on the ground just like this one. And then we can literally just walk the machine from that track onto this one. These tracks can go on either side of the machine. This track is the exactly the same track as that side of the machine and vice versa, but they are directional. They have to go on a specific direction or they just don't grab the traction that they're supposed to get in the mud and the material that you're working in. In this case, I know I took this track off in that direction, so I put it on in this direction. But when you're looking at it, if you look at the link when it's laying on the ground, you want the male end of the link, which is the narrow end of the link, pointing forwards towards the blade and the female end, which is the wider end of the link, pointing backwards towards the sprocket.
now that I'm on this track, because this pin can only go in from one direction, we have to put it in the way it came out. So it has to go in from the inside of the machine. Because the blade is on the front of this machine, some machines don't have a blade, I have to put the pin in on the sprocket end so that we can get our driver in there to drive it all the way in. Otherwise the blade's in our way. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook a chain up. We're gonna use the machine to pull the track on. There are many ways to do this. You can do it if you have a couple of guys with a bar, that sort of thing. I do it this way. When I do it this way, you want everybody, once you're hooked up and the chain becomes tight, because the excavator has a lot of power and it can break the chain, you want everybody to be standing at least the length of the chain distance away for safety reasons. Now these tracks to hook a chain onto are a little more difficult than the steel tracks. These ones, again, there's multiple ways you can do it. The way I like to do it is by taking a, a good punch and put it through the hole like so. and then I hook onto it like that. So what'll happen is it will lift it up like this and it'll pull it all the way on. You wanna lay the chain on the machine where you want the track to go. And then it's gonna grab a shackle and we're gonna hook up the chain to the bucket. Now that we have it hooked up like this, I'm gonna start the excavator. We're gonna pull this, we're gonna stick out. Gonna to have to swing a little bit to keep it lined up as you walk the machine down the chain. So as you walk it down the chain, the stick will pull the top of the track up and over top until you get to the end. As you can see, I've parked my truck a little bit too close. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shorten this chain a little bit so we have a little bit more movement. So now that we've got the track virtually on the machine where we need it to be, I'm gonna grab a block of wood and we wanna block this link up if I can get it to go up. So this track is fairly new, so it's staying in the air. But if you have an older track, it, they tend to just fall right back down. So now as you can see, what I was doing is I was line, lining the lower link with the upper link so we can put this master pin back in. What I did forget though, and I'm gonna pop it apart, is to put those two washers back in. These two washers need to be put back into the lower link. Sometimes they get a little bit loose and they like to just fall out. They don't wanna stay there. So what I do is I use some grease. Too much grease is not bad. And if you get some grease on there, it acts like a little bit of a glue and it just holds it there, suctions it in there. Sometimes you may split a set of tracks and these uh, washers are missing these bushings. Um, that means the last person that did it uh, lost the bush, lost the washers and uh, they never ended up going back in. Put a piece of wood in here to hold it up. You can't use a smaller one. I didn't have a smaller one on my truck this time. You line up the hole this time. We got a little bit lucky, I think. Again, now we go to the pin. We know that the nipple side is bigger and uh, the non-nipple side is smaller, can only go in that direction. If it starts easy, you can use a drift. Again, you wanna use safety glasses in case any metal decides to break off and go flying. Now, because it's a tapered pin, it goes in easy till a certain point, and then the taper starts to get a little bit tighter. It's like a wedge. So then we have to use the pin driver and the sledgehammer again. Now you only want to go in far enough so that you can put the snap ring in because the further you go in, the more you open up those links because it's like a wedge, 
and you're gonna wear them out sooner than later. Happens when you open it up, you put the snap ring in, the pin may start to get loose back out a little bit up against the snap ring, and now it's loose in there and it kind of walks around and really wears the bores out. The next thing that we do is we put the snap ring back in. If you can't quite get at it where the pin is right now, you can fire up the machine, you can move the link to a better spot to be able to put the snap ring in. You want to make sure that it's nicely in the groove all the way around so it doesn't fall out as this machine is being worked and ran. Now that the snap ring's in, the master pin's in, now we can adjust the track to its proper tension. Make sure we put the grease valve back in, make sure it's nice and tight. Usually there's a fair bit of grease in this pocket, so I wipe it out. Sometimes after you put the grease valve back in, either the track adjuster inside has spun a little bit or the grease nipple itself has spun a little bit. As much as the grease nipples are not replaceable on the grease valve itself, they are on swivels. So right now, if you look in here, the grease nipple is not aiming the direction that we want it to aim. So what I've got here is a short 10 millimeter wrench and that's the size that you can put on the grease nipple and you can spin it to the direction that you want. So now I've spun it in the direction that I can get my grease gun on it to be able to adjust the tracks. Now we start applying grease into the track adjuster and it'll adjust the track. I use a cordless grease gun. You don't have to, I've got air grease guns. You can use a manual grease gun, any which way grease gun that you use to put grease in there. And like always, the grease can always run out of grease. Now when I adjust these tracks on a machine this size, you find the middle roller, the top of the rail, and in between the roller where the rail would ride. Behind the track guide here, it's a little bit tough to see, but you want to be about the four knuckles. No thumb involved, those are bigger machines, 300s and up, you throw the thumb in there, but on this particular machine, you want the four knuckles in there. Now to recheck it, you run this track backwards and the reason we run it backwards is any slack that's on top, the sprocket will pull it out and put it on the bottom to get us an accurate uh, gauge. We loosened off just a little bit, so I'm gonna add a little bit more grease. This track is adjusted and installed correctly. If you watch this channel and it helped you, please like, comment, and subscribe.